there are two different ways judges can get on the ballot. We can either gather a percentage of signatures uh, based upon the number of voters that voted in the last gubernatorial election in our county, or we can pay a filing fee. The filing fee is rather large. Um, it's a little bit over $5,500, and so most judges actually gather signatures, at least the ones I talk to. It's got to be a little bit of a relief when you finally had those uh, petitions signed and those signatures in. It's amazing. Um, I was, uh, we, we needed just under 1,100, and I was shooting for 1,300 because you're always careful and you want to make sure that you get a few extra. And um, about, about Saturday before I was planning on filing on Tuesday or Wednesday, I had probably 700 signatures, and so I had a panic moment. Um, a lot of folks, a lot of businesses, uh, Bright School District, um, several different people can't, really came through and helped out a lot. You just can't kind of do this kind of thing on your own. And um, I ended up with 1,475 signatures. And when I walked in the state capitol and, and turned all those in and got my, they always take your picture, everybody that's running for office, and as I'm walking out the door, you just breathe. And it's for, probably the first time I breathed in about a week. It's got to be a bit humbling to have that type of support and those type of people behind you. It is. Uh, everything about this kind of job is a little bit humbling. Um, it's, it's frightening to, to know that you're, you're doing things and making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that change people's lives. And, and I've always said, if you're not scared of that a little bit, you need to quit. Um, it, it's amazing um, that, that people sometimes, even when they're on the wrong side of a decision, uh, when they walk up and tell you that, that they understand what you did and why you did it, um, it's, uh, there's a lot about this job that's just incredible. You spoke to the Golden K Kiwanis Club today. Kind of talk a little bit about what you've learned in five years as a judge because uh, you shared some experiences and, and some di interesting tidbits about your job that, that maybe the general public isn't always aware of. And Grant, it would take me about a month straight of interviewing to tell you everything I've learned in the last five years. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that I've learned is that it, it's become really, really clear that we're all just a step away from being in the ditch. Um, we all have have things that we have to avoid. We all have things we have to watch out for. Um, we all um, need to learn that that the the biggest way to change our community, the biggest way to affect our society, is is to build relationships and and to try to be a positive effect on people. The the phrase that I've started using with people over and over and over again that I keep coming back to is, is that our value as a human being is based on how you affect people. And you have to make a decision every day as to whether you're gonna affect people positively or negatively. And I see that so much in this job. The, the things that I say really do affect people. And, and people don't realize that it, it's not just the people that wear a black robe that affect people. And, and I talked to one of my drug court people yesterday, and I didn't use this story, or I guess two days ago now, and, and I looked at her because she's, she's this woman, she's, she's about my age, and, and she's probably a little bit goofy, and she knows that, I'd say that to her. But when she stands up, everybody in the room smiles. And, and I just looked at her before she had time to say a word, and I said, it is a unique gift to be able to make people around you smile and the world would be a better place if a few more of us tried to do that. Talk a little bit about the uh, future, what you see beyond this year uh, for your court. Um, I wish I had about 40 more people to, to be able to pay and work with. Um, I'd like to, I've put two probation officers inside Bryant School District. I'd like to do that with every school district in the county. Uh, not, not to catch more kids doing things, but when we put probation officers inside the school district, we're building relationships with kids that haven't gotten in trouble. We're helping kids to avoid getting in trouble. Um, we're, we're causing kids that are already in trouble and on probation to learn to build relationships and have someone to talk to. And, and so we're avoiding kids getting in trouble. We're having a probation officer meet with parents and, and students before they ever get involved in the truancy program so they don't get sent to court. We're, we're learning to intervene and, and not to 
dig into people's lives, but to, to start discussing issues as they arise and trying to keep them out of court as opposed to finding new ways to get them in court. Because we got more work than we can do. We, we don't need to look for work. Uh, everybody, the, the common greeting when, when you run into somebody on the streets, hey, you been busy? And, and I look at people these days and say, you don't want me to be busy. Now, when I was practicing law for those 17 years, you, I wanted to be busy. I, I don't get paid based upon the number of people I see. Um, I, I think I get reelected or, or run unopposed based upon my effectiveness. And, and we want to do things that build relationships and, and help to change this community in a positive way.